Hi everybody, I'm Pastor Tammy, one of the pastors at Messiah Church in Plymouth, Minnesota, and this is Monday Morning Prayers. Welcome to this space again. Here we are on Monday morning, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. We've been meeting here for quite some time as a place to find community, to share a word of hope, and to pray for one another and for our world. And so I welcome you to this space. I'm so glad that you're able to be here with me today. Yesterday in worship, Pastor Steve reminded us of the words of Moses that say, even in the midst of challenging and difficult days, choose life so that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, and hold fast to him. And to do that, to be able to hold fast to him, Steve offered us this simple phrase, simply to the cross I cling. When I heard that phrase, it reminded me of this melody. Simply to the cross I cling. Does that ever happen to you? You hear a word or a phrase and it reminds you of a song? I think in times of uncertainty and challenges, and we're certainly living in some of those days right now, our mind searches for familiar and comforting things for which to cling. And I think that's what brought this melody to my mind. Simply to the cross I cling. Maybe you know it too. It's from a beloved hymn written by Augustus Top Lady over 250 years ago. Top Lady lived in England and was traveling from village to village through a steep gorge when a storm moved in. And so he took shelter in the crevice of a huge rock. And while he was hiding from that terrifying storm, his eyes were open to what Jesus had done for him in his life. And he expressed this revelation by writing the hymn, Rock of Ages. What started off as a terrifying experience to open the door to a life-changing revelation for Top Lady. And today, his hymn still reminds us that we can trust in Jesus. We can cling to the cross during the storms of life. It reminds us that Jesus is our rock, and we can hide in him and take refuge in him. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress, helpless come to thee for grace. God alone can wash away our sins and shelter us from the storms of life. Psalm 18 says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. So today, as you begin this new day and begin this new week, may you remember to focus on Jesus and the promise of the cross. Make him your rock, place your trust in him. Will you join me now as we go to God in prayer. Oh God, good morning. We give you thanks for the promise to hide us in your shelter in the day of trouble and to conceal us in the corner of your tent. When we are overwhelmed by our own needs and the needs of the world, we know that we can come and hide with you. When the changing world seems too much and the needs of others weigh upon us, we know that you will give us space to think and rest. And when life just feels like too much and the anxiety in us is too great, you offer us solace and a safe space to be. And so today we come to you with many prayers on our hearts. We pray for strength and encouragement for Maya and Abby and Cassandra and Cole, all who are starting colleges in the next few days in the midst of these uncertain times. We pray for Jen as he starts his sophomore year at the Coast Guard Academy. We pray for the family of David Hegard as they gather to celebrate his life this week. We pray continued prayers for a sweet friend, Melissa, as her body heals and gets stronger. We pray for good results from a daughter's medical test on Wednesday. And we ask for your comfort for a family who recently lost their dad, Tom, to cancer. And we pray for Mary Jo's mom and for peace and inner strength for Mary Jo. 
We pray for conclusive results and a sense of your presence for Veronica. As she has a CT scan, blood work, and other tests coming up in the next few weeks. We pray for a daughter, Susan, who's getting married this week with many family and friends in attendance. We pray for it to be a most blessed event and that everyone would stay safe and healthy. We pray for a cousin, Marg, and her brain tumor that continues to shrink, and we give you thanks for the way you are working in her body. Our prayers um, are long for those who are struggling with cancer this week, O oh Lord, and so we pray for Gary and for Brian and for our friend Nancy, who's in the final stages of cancer. We pray for granddaughter Stephanie. She's been diagnosed with thyroid cancer and will have surgery this week. We pray for strength and faith and a good recovery for her and also for her doctors and nurses. We pray for son Eric and his long battle with stomach cancer. We pray for Ellen a neighbor, and her neighbor Kim, whose lung cancer treatment is not working. We pray for those who will start experimental ther therapies this week and for Brent as he completes his radiation treatment for his cancer this week. We keep our prayers for 16-year-old Brennan and his family to place them in your care as they adjust to his new diagnosis of diabetes, and especially as he starts school this week. We pray for Alice as she sees an ear specialist tomorrow to find out what the next step in her plan for healing will be. And we pray for Ralph as he undergoes testing for a diagnosis for a health challenge. We pray for baby Evan who just received a liver transplant. Our prayer that is, is successful and that she thrives and enjoys good health and a long life. We pray for strength for Gary who's supporting his sister during a possible COVID-19 exposure. We pray for relief and answers for young Felicity as she continues to struggle with nausea. We pray for Anne and all those who are seeking employment. We pray for a son whose roommate tested positive for COVID-19 and now he is quarantined for two weeks alone in a hotel room and away at college. May he cope with the loneliness and find peace in this time and we pray that you would keep all students and staff and teachers safe as schools and colleges all over open this next week and in the weeks ahead. We pray for unity and crisis, not division. We pray for our frontline workers. We pray for a vaccine for COVID-19. We pray for racial justice and healing for the cities of Minneapolis and Portland and Kenosha in these challenging times. We pray that we will continue to listen for your voice, O oh God. And we praise you for your presence in our lives, for your unconditional love. May your spirit surround those whose hearts are hurting. We pray for information, understanding, courageous conversations, equity, peace, and unity in all aspects of our society, but especially during the racial unrest in our world right now. And we have names in our hearts that we lift to you today. Those names are Sandy and Joan, Jim and Harriet, Lyle, Leanne, Brenda, Diane, Brian and Helen, Jana, Jean, Nancy and Larry, Jeff, Linda, Deb, Vicki and Carmela, Kathleen, Dan, Harvey, Shar, and Ashley. Be at work in their life, O oh Lord. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Grant us mercy and grace to trust you more deeply. For the only secure plan is with you, our light and our salvation, the stronghold of our life. Thank you for all that you are and all you have done and will continue to do for us in our lives. You are our rock and our fortress, our stronghold, our safe place. We put our trust in you. It's in the precious name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Well, it turned out to be a rainy morning here in Plymouth, Minnesota has turned out to be a beautiful day. So I hope you get outside to enjoy it. But no matter where you are today, 
May this be, be the beginning of a great week. God bless. Be well.